Okay, so what does a real estate model look like? And a real estate model will have um, four, generally four key areas, and they need to be distinct. These four key areas need to be dis distinct from one another. And a key element, as with any cash flow, is time. Um, and we work in a um, sort of an anti-clockwise pattern here. So we've got our global inputs, which will affect the which will affect the whole model, um, and then we'll separate that uh, to the tenancy schedule, the tenant inputs. So every tenant will have its own contract details. And what you don't want is every tenant to have the same contract details. So, for example, if you had a shopping centre, what you don't want to do, what you definitely don't want to do is put all the break clauses. Uh, break clause is an opportunity for the tenant to leave the property um, earlier than the the, the lease ends. So there will be sort of sort of break points in the lease where they can get out if they need to. Now, you don't want to put break clauses um, in all of your tenants on the same same dates, because if you're a shop in your, if you're in a shopping centre and shopping centre will suffer from a five to 10 percent vacancy um, in that uh, uh, another property, another type of property won't suffer in as in as much uh, as, as as much. And the reason for that is because if you walk around a shopping centre and a bit of it is empty, let's take obviously normal uh, normal circumstances and part of it is empty uh, then it will give you a sense it will give you a feeling that perhaps this isn't the place to, place to be so it can have a knock on effect so if you've got people um leaving the shopping center you need the opportunity to figure out what's going on to do something about it worst case scenario reducing all the rents in order to encourage everyone back in um, is one solution it's not the only solution but you need you need the opportunity to do something about that um, if they if you've got a few of them that are about to break you can bet your bottom dollar that every other retail unit in the shopping center will know about it if not from communication between the shop assistants from nothing else, they all might get scared and then you may get a whole sort of trigger. You, uh, you may get a run on your, uh, on your break clauses being activated. So the point here is you need to diversify them. What happens or what that means for financial modeling for your rent function is that if they're all uh, diversified if they're all different so break clauses are different and um, everything else as well your lease expiries your rent reviews you might think rent reviews uh, should perhaps not be um, should all sort of happen at the point where you think you're going to capture the most growth but growth is predicted as well so it's like putting um, your chip all on the the, the same number when you're playing playing roulette you're expecting the growth to happen at that point for that need, that needs to be diversified as well your your ability to capture uh, the growth in the growth in rent so from modeling what that means is that your function so let's shift to the very colorful bit that i've called rental cash flow there um and uh, those colors are representing it's not you know it, it's just an image so it doesn't it's not actually reflecting a cash flow but it, the image is trying to get across that perhaps each of those colors are representing a break clause a lease expiry a rent free period and if they're all sort of moved about a bit there is a diversification here not everything there's not sort of blocks of color there not everything is happening at the same time from a modeling perspective it means in the top left hand corner of that rental cash flow you're going to have to model for all of that behavior in for each of your tenants across the whole cash flow and that one formula that rent function then has to be copied across the rental cash flow and down the rental cash flow as well and it has to pick up all of that information and I've mentioned a whole array of different features that you could have in a lease you have to model for all of those and then you have to test them for every point in the rental cash flow so that's your rent function uh, and that is I mean uh, if you've not used uh, finan real estate financial models before or you've looked at real estate financial models and you've not used them you might be kind of moving down the spreadsheet you might be thinking well that number looks okay and that's fine I can probably cope with this spreadsheet and then you hit a number a formula that's lines and lines and lines long and they just give up and say yeah you know I, I, I can't deal with this what you're normally looking at when you hit that that really long formula is a is a rent function because it is a challenge to try and 
try and abbreviate that rent function. And what we do in our courses, of course, is uh, talk about how you would build those rent functions, how you look for patterns and how you make them efficient so that you can project your rental cash flows as accurately as you predict them. So rather than just those one-off uh, figures that you have in the valuations where you're making those assessments with those, you know, the, the size, rent and the yield at the very beginning here, you're really trying to look at the detail. And it is important to look at the detail because what if vacancy was uh, expanded? So the, the, the empty period between a lease ends and a new lease starts might be three months but what if you stress the model to change it to 12 months um, you might think well I can cope to that to, to a point but then when you put it into the cash flow you may see that a few of them overlap and as they overlap you end up with potential not guaranteed but potential great big holes in your cash flow and that may affect your overall IRR. Once you've generated the cash flow, that's by far the most complex bit, uh, then feeding that back up to the project cash flow. And you'll need to remove from that your oper operational expenditure, your capex and, and get all your investment activity. Um, and then uh, you'll generate your net cash flow. It's the net cash flow that's the holy grail of uh, all of our models. And then we turn that into an IRR, an MPV and worth and any other metrics that we might be we might be looking at. So that's the general form of a model.